from the heart of Philly, this is CBS News Philadelphia. A SEPTA passenger struck with a meat cleaver. What police are saying about the brazen attack. And a South Jersey sergeant killed in her own home. Neighbors left in disbelief as investigators are now searching for answers. And it's the coldest morning yet. Some are waking up to temperatures in the 30s. For others, it's in the 40s. Either way, it's cold. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the News at 7, streaming on CBS News Philadelphia and on Philly 57. I'm Jim Donovan. And I'm Janelle Varel. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday morning. We're going to start with the next weather forecast with meteorologist Kate Bailu in our next weather sphere. Chilly, chilly, chilly. Kate, good morning. Good morning to you guys. It is dropping even more. I just went and reloaded the temperatures and it is now by far the coldest morning in Philadelphia. We had not been able to break that 45 degree mark. All of our cold mornings, it has gotten down to 45 in the city and no colder than that. But let's go ahead and put up our map here and I'll show you where we are right now. As the sun prepares to rise, we have dropped to 42 degrees in Philadelphia, which is three degrees colder than the coldest morning so far this season. So a very chilly start in the city. We're at 41 in Millville, not as cold down the shore and across South Jersey this morning, thanks to just a few more clouds there, but the real cold is off to the north and west where temperatures are hovering near the freezing mark. And I want to put up our watches and warnings here because we do have where you see that bright blue shading to the north. That's a freeze warning for the Lehigh Valley, the Poconos and Berks County, and you can see why Lehigh Heightens at 31 Allentown 33, but it did dip down below freezing at the Allentown Bethlehem Airport this morning. Spots like Coatesville and Chester County and Pottstown. That's where we've got temperatures in the mid 30s, cold enough for some frost, but likely not enough for that season an ending freeze. So it is a very chilly start to your day. Uh, here's another look at the areas included in that frost advisory. All of Bucks, Montgomery, Chester County, Mercer County as well. Freeze warning for Lehigh, Northampton, Berks, Carbon and Monroe counties this morning. So again, these warnings are for plants and not really for people, but it's a good rule of thumb, a good indication of just what it's going to feel like when you step out the door and that is cold. But don't put the short sleeve shirts away just yet. As we finally start to kick this system out of here, it's bringing some clouds to the shore. It looks like rain right off the coast. That rain's not going to get here. We could use it, but it's going to move further out to sea and high pressure will take its place and we start to really warm up tomorrow. Today, though, is still a chilly fall day, so pretty much a carbon copy of yesterday. Grab that chunky knit sweater. You may want the sunglasses and the comfy boots as well. 61 is our high today. That is about six degrees below average. But the next six days after this look to be above average every single day. I'll break that down coming up with your full next weather forecast. Let's send it over to Kim Hudson, who's in for Chandler with your morning traffic. Hey, Kim. Hey, Kate. We have a new crash. This one is in Frederica, Delaware. Right now it's on Route 1 northbound at Baker's Landing Road. So we have one lane closed because of this crash in Frederica, Delaware. We're also dealing with this crash on Route 100 that's affecting both the north and southbound lanes at Ship Road. You need to be aware that this isn't near Lionville and also be aware that you're going to be diverted by law enforcement around this scene. We are also looking at a lot more volume on the Schuylkill eastbound at Montgomery Drive. The same thing 495 southbound at Cotman Avenue. You need to know that you're going to have a lot more people out there driving with you. So if you need to be anywhere, go ahead and leave now because we're starting to see drive time start to creep up. If you're taking 95 southbound coming out of Bucks County and heading towards Center City, it's going to take you 24 minutes. OK, so now our drive times are starting to go up. The same thing for the Schuylkill eastbound. If you guys are coming off of the Blue Route going down into the Vine, that's going to take you 25 minutes now. Janelle. All right, thank you for that, Kim. Breaking news at a Philadelphia Spring Garden neighborhood this morning where a man armed with a meat cleaver attacked a passenger on a SEPTA bus. This happened around 2.30 this morning. Witnesses say the attacker was rambling before he attacked that rider. The victim was taken to Jefferson University Hospital with head and hand injuries. The attacker, a 45-year-old man, was arrested. Detectives say the men did not know each other. It's a crime that has shaken the South Jersey law enforcement community. A detective murdered at her own home. Now the search is on for her killer. Around 1030 Tuesday night, Bridgeton police responded to Sergeant Monica Mosley's house after reports of multiple people kicking in her front door. Police found Mosley inside bleeding from a gunshot wound. She died inside of her home. Her neighbors are heartbroken. This don't happen like in our neighborhood. And to her, of all people, why? Why would, you know, why would they do that? Police do not know if Mosley was targeted because of her job. Investigators have a person in custody for questioning. They are being treated for a gunshot wound at the hospital. 
An argument escalated into a deadly shooting inside of a takeout restaurant in North Philadelphia. This happened just after 8.30 last night at China Garden on the 800 block of West Erie Avenue. Police say surveillance video shows the 34-year-old victim and the shooter in an altercation before that shooting. We know that the shooting victim got shot in the Chinese takeout customer area on the corner of 8th and Erie. We did find one spent shell casing from a semi-automatic gun inside of the Chinese takeout. The victim was found lying on the sidewalk and later died at the hospital. At this point, no arrests have been made. The man wanted in the hit and run that injured three nurses outside of Penn Presbyterian Medical Center has surrendered to police. 20-year-old Jadir Goodwin turned himself into police at headquarters yesterday afternoon. The crash happened Saturday when police say a group of men dropped off a shooting victim at the hospital, jumped back into the car and hit the nurses and the shooting victim as they drove off. One of the nurses is still in critical condition. And right now we're working to find out if anybody was displaced after this row home fire. This is in Spring Garden. Video shows the flames shooting from the roof of this house on the 2000 block of Green Street. The fire beginning just before 10 o'clock last night. No injuries reported. The cause now under investigation. Well, Election Day right around the corner. Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump are trying to win over undecided voters. Yesterday, Harris made her case to Republicans and independents while she was in Bucks County. Trump made his pitch to women and Latino voters during a town hall in Florida. CBS News correspondent Jared Hill has the latest on the race for the White House. Vice President Kamala Harris spent Wednesday reaching across the political divide. No matter who you voted for last time, there is a place for you in this campaign. Appearing alongside more than 100 Republicans at a rally in suburban Pennsylvania ahead of a rare sit down with Fox News. We have a broken immigration system that needs to be repaired. So your and Homeland Security Secretary said that 85% well, no, of not finished, apprehensions. I'm not finished. In the sometimes contentious interview, Harris said her administration would not be a continuation of President Biden's. I represent a new generation of leadership. And she slammed former President Donald Trump's rhetoric. You and I both know that he has talked about turning the American military on the American people. I think she's harmed our country horribly. At a Univision town hall, Trump took questions from undecided Latino voters on issues like his proposal for mass deportations. We want workers and we want them to come in, but they have to come in legally. They have to love our country. He doubled down on spreading misinformation about Haitian migrants living in Ohio. I was just saying what was reported. And defended January 6th. That was a day of love. Trump also made this claim at a town hall on Fox with women voters. I'm the father of IVF. Which Harris later called bizarre. The reality is his actions have been very harmful to women and, and families in America on this issue. Today, both are back on the campaign trail with just 19 days until Election Day. Jared Hill, CBS News. Here are some important deadlines for voters in Pennsylvania. You need to register by October 21st if you want to vote. If you want an absentee ballot requested by October 26th, those ballots are due by 8 p.m. on Election Day. In New Jersey, registration for voters has, uh, voter registration deadline has passed. October 29th is the deadline to apply for a mail-in ballot by mail. But you can also apply for one online until November 1st and in person until November 4th. But a registration deadline has also passed in Delaware. The last day to request an absentee ballot by mail is November 1st. You can still get one in person until noon the day before Election Day. By the way, absentee ballots must be received by 8 p.m. on Election Day. Following some breaking news out of North Philly right now where a medic was stabbed this morning by someone he was trying to help. CBS News Philadelphia's Brandon Goldner live with the latest on this breaking story out of North Philly. Brandon, what do we know? Good morning. Good morning. Right now, what we know is that medics, according to police, medics were transporting someone to the hospital when that person became irate and then stabbed a medic. That person then jumped out of the ambulance and then ran off. Police were able to get that person. According to police, that person still had the knife on them. That medic is at Temple in critical condition. Let me just show you a little bit of what we have right now. We have a lot of police officers out here. We have this area roped off right here where officers have crime scene tape up right here. And we have two ambulances then also over here as well. We're working to get additional information from Philadelphia Fire Department about who this medic was and what additional details we can get as well about the individual who police say is responsible for this. Right now, we'll send it back over to you all. 
Right, Brandon Goldner live from North Philadelphia with those breaking details for us. Brandon, thank you for that report.